Hello friends, welcome back. This is full stack development video series and we are building online course endowment application. This is episode 15 and in this video I will show you how you can create Azure function in Azure portal and using Azure DevOps how we can create CI CD pipeline and deploy this code automatically to the Azure portal. Come without delay, let's get started. So friends, before we dive in, this is the GitHub link where you will find every single project that I'm demonstrating. So feel free to go through and browse whichever project you like. For this specific video, I will post the exact link of the repository in the video description itself. If you would like to follow me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter and GitHub, these are the links that you can click and follow me. I will be more than happy to collaborate with you. So don't forget to follow me. Now let's dive into the video. In the previous video, we saw how you can enrich the ADBTC token using the function. So this is the function that we have to now assume that how we can uh, create it and deploy to the Azure portal. Okay. So you learned what are functions and how to create functions. However, we haven't learned how to deploy it. So that's what we're going to do. Go to the portal portal.azure.com and after that, click here in the search and say Azure function like function app. You'll see something like this. You click on this. I have all of these functions app. Everything is free, meaning like I have more like more than 1 million requests uh, for a given time. I think it's free, which is more than sufficient. So you can see everything is free. I'll explain you what is Azure function. So click on create and it will give you this kind of an option. First of all, Azure functions are nothing but a small piece of code that runs on a server okay which means this is exactly like how you have your web api endpoint think of that it does one work right it does something similarly this is a small function a logic written that does some work now that work you know how to trigger when to trigger is based on the type of Azure function. We have different functions like HTTP trigger, um, Cosmos DB trigger, um, you know, timer function, this function, so many functions. Like even if something happens in database, you want it to trigger something, you can do it. You want something to be triggered based on a file is uploaded in the Azure storage account, you can do it. Those are called triggers, types of trigger. What we saw in the previous video was HTTP trigger function, which means it has a unique URL that can be triggered using HTTP calls. Okay. Now coming back to Azure functions, you have these options. Now Azure functions are called serverless functions, which means you don't need to worry about uh, how this has been uh, running, but basically behind the scene, this is exactly like app service plan and web app. Microsoft Azure will do all of those work behind the scene. First of all, we have to choose the hosting plan. Hosting plan, if you see, if you go with consumption plan, which means pay based on how much you are utilizing, you will be charged. Like I said, for the first 1 million records for uh, so many seconds, it is free. Uh, you can go to a portal calculation calculator where you can uh, see those kind of things. But consumption plan is the best plan. Okay. And it shows you difference. You see this, what is there? It, it knows when to scale, what kind of instance, how many instances it can scale all of those things, right? You can have your dedicated app service plan, which means you need to pay for it. You can have higher plan, premium plan. Those are applicable for the companies who really want it. But for us, consumption plan is best. So I will choose the consumption plan. So you understand hosting plan difference. Once you choose, again, it will bring up to this situation where you need to fill up the information. Now, I will quickly explain you important stuff. You need to choose a subscription. Uh, you have to choose the resource group. After that, you need to give a function name. You remember, though your functions are created by you, they also sit behind a website, which is Azure App Service Web App. That's why it is asking you to create a name like this dot mic uh, azure websites dot net okay so i actually created uh like this smart 
learn smart by kartik functions dot azure websites dot net you need to have this unique name i created it you know what you're going to deploy and our stack is dot net here you choose which version dot net isolated in process you remember i was explaining about isolated and in progress i was explaining about isolated and in process in the previous video basically ours is isolated that's why i choose this you choose where you have to host it and then storage for azure function it is mandatory it has to have a storage okay so it will create the storage to uh, generate the logs and other stuff and then you can also configure this um, you know this diagnostic settings and then go to this network click on enable because we need to access this from our uh, public endpoint that's why it has to be enabled monitoring yes of course azure app insights are beautiful so enable it deployment we will see how you will deploy easily using ci cd pipeline from azure devops so we will disable this if not you can ask also you know if you have this code in github you can actually enable this and choose the repository from here again disable the basic authentication we should not leave any loopholes that uh, can be accessed so we will not do that tag we already know it's basically for tracking purpose go to the last step click on create once you have this created you will end up like this okay so you will have you will end up like this so it will have the url it will show you in the overview what functions you deployed when you first time create of course you will not have this after you do a ci cd pipeline you will see the functions getting deployed but basically there will be functions here okay there are other important things if you look at this there are log streams where you can see the logs and if you scroll down let's talk about the important stuff application insights okay and you can go here if it is configured if not you can choose when to configure so let's go back and show you if, let's say you have to configure manually you can click this and choose which one to configure or you can change also okay so you can choose which one to configure and say apply click it configured but as we did create it when we created the function itself and you can see for the last 12 hours as i test you can see the logs are getting coming here okay so all of those logs you can see see these these are called by the azure adb to see so this is how you will see now let's go back to function overview let's go back to function comes to go to the overview and you see this these two are the functions okay so these functions you can test it from here as well like if you can literally go here go to the integration um and then no i think you should go to code and test you can actually do a test and run give the input run it and it will run but we are not going to see those things here i'll show or maybe give you the links of azure functions video detailed videos i have what are functions how to create various functions how these uh, functionality works those things in this video i'm going to cover important stuff so you know how to go into the apis go to the logs actually if you have done the previous video if you go to logs for you to debug whenever uh, for example let me show you lively okay so logs are open right so i'm going to log out this application login you'll see what i'm seeing so i'm going to sign in you see there will be logs coming here now you see as the login process is happening that is calling the function and you can see logs are happening here so this is the best way of debugging you can see live logs coming up here okay so uh these are the important stuff so we are good now let's jump back to the ci cd pipeline dev.ashu.com we already saw this our side this time all the repositories i have kept it inside this source control for you to take of course you will take it from here but we are dealing with everything from azure devops okay now what we are going to do is under this repository online course function all the codes are here okay go to pipelines click on new pipeline that will be interesting and easy you see this these are the code it is asking where is your code okay you want to create a pipeline fine well and good where is your code i will say my code is in azure repo github itself like here itself and then i'll try to filter it 
I'll choose the function. Here is the important thing. We are not building any ASP.NET Core. We are building .NET Core Azure function. So if you click this, so many interesting stuff will happen. It is trying to load the subscription because it thinks you wanted to deploy this to the Azure function. And then I am seeing my two subscriptions because I have two subscription. If you have only one subscription, it will show here or, or you might even be triggered to log in, which is okay. I logged in. It already knows that. That's why it is showing me. But for you, it might even ask you to log in. If you log in, it knows what to show here. Once I choose the subscription and continue, it is uh, asking me to authenticate myself, like prove me that my subscription is this. All right. So after I proved, it is now asking the function name. See, I have two functions. The function that I'm interested in is this function. I choose the function name, leave everything good, validate and configure. This is a very interesting part. I didn't do anything other than what I just showed you, right? It is beautifully giving me the whole YAML file, which will be from build to the uh, end, uh, like deployment. The only thing that I need to change here is I want this to be triggered based on the main branch. So let's go over this, right? So it is basically having which branch, some variables holding the Azure subscription ID, function name, all of those things and stages, right? You see this, these are all like build stages. It is it's basically building the application. And then finally, it will come to the deployment stage. Basically, this YAML file can be a separate one, but it itself uh, created everything together. So it's going to have all of these functions and it knows where to pick up the build content. If I do a save and run, it will trigger a build. But I will show you the existing one, which is already there. OK, this is my code. You see this. This is what we saw exactly. OK, so when we trigger a function, what it will do is I can run one more time. So I can choose this, run it. Basically, it will be like this. You see this? stages first is build stage second is deployment stage how this will look i'll show you okay let's go back to the previous uh, thing that will be easy to show so i will open this you see this based on the yaml file it is taking all of these things it is building preparing an artifact zipping it keeping it ready go to the deployment step it will take the artifacts it will deploy to the Azure app. Now, one thing, in case when it comes to deployment stage, if it tells it you need to permit, that the app needs permission to deploy, just go here, click on permit and proceed. One time work. After that, every time that we go and like the function gets triggered, this will be automatically done everything and Azure functions gets deployed into the function here. OK, so in this video, we saw what are Azure functions, how to create Azure function in Azure portal, hosting plans, and then how you can deploy this Azure function code from CI CD pipeline using Azure DevOps. In the previous video, I showed you again, I'll repeat in this video. Also, you have to go to this environment variable and configure these properties and connection string based on what you have it in the connection string here. So anything that is in local settings.json, these properties will not be there. You need to create these properties. You look at this, this property, this property, this property, and connection string property. This will be pointing to the real database, which is in Azure. You need to configure these things. Only then your Azure apps function will work. If not, it won't work. If you are stuck, I've also showed you how to debug, how to show the log, go to the app insights and figure out what's going on. Or I suggest a simple way to rewatch my two videos. You will not make any mistake. On top of it, if you're still struggling, let me know in the comment section. I will help you out. And this video is done for now. I will talk to you in the next video, next interesting video in episode 16. So stay tuned, enjoy all of these things. Let me know how you feel so far with all of this uh, video series. To like the video, 
share this with many friends and in your circle don't forget to subscribe i'll see you in the next video bye bye thanks for watching if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos if you have any questions or suggestions leave them in the comments below happy coding